This is the last class of the expo, so you are it. So my name is Eric Cortina. I, uh, I'm an F-class shooter. And today we're gonna talk about how to load ammo precisely. This is about a 12 hour class and I'm gonna do it in about an hour and a half. So I'm gonna go fast. If you have questions, more than likely I'm going to answer them. At the end, if you have any others, I can answer them quite quick. Let's just start with the basics, barrel twist, right? You have to have the correct barrel twist so that you can stabilize your bullets. How many here know the twist of your barrel? Everybody. Everybody, everybody knows. Nice. How many here actually checked it? Check the twist. So two people. The point is you don't know, right? You just go in by what they told you. Something that I learned from Speedy, he, he mentored me in gunsmithing is, everything is broken until you check it. Real easy way to check them. You take a cleaning rod, you put your bore guide in there, you stick the cleaning rod in there with a patch, and you go in there uh, about three, four inches, make sure it engages. Put a mark on your cleaning rod, just right outside your bore guide. Put a mark right there. Put a mark at top dead center on the cleaning rod and line it up, put a mark on the handle, okay? And start pushing it in. And watch that mark. When that mark makes a full revolution, comes back up to the same mark again, mark your, clean, you know, your cleaning rod again at the same spot, right outside your bore guide. Push the patch all the way through, remove the patch, pull it back through, measure between the marks. That's your barrel twist. Nine twists or seven twists, what that means is there's, the bullet will make one full revolution in seven inches. If it's an eight twist, it makes one full revolution eight inches, so on and so forth. So if it's an eight twist, you should have eight inches between the marks. The reason I say that is sometimes they are marked incorrectly and you're gonna waste a lot of time and effort and money trying to tune this rifle because you're having, you know, you have bullets that are too heavy for it. Because it was simply marked incorrectly. So that's one of the things you gotta do. Check your barrel twist, it's very easy. I mean, you clean your rifles every time you use them anyway, right? Oh, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> All right, consistency is the name of the game. All right, bullet selection. You gotta pick a bullet. Well, you gotta have a good bullet. That's the three Bs. You, got, you guys heard about the three Bs? Anybody? Three Bs? Brass, bullets, what do you think the other one is? Barrel. Barrels. If you get those three Bs, you're gonna be almost all the way there. Brass, barrels, and bullets. So you gotta select good bullets. Bullets is the most expensive thing you will ever shoot. That is what you're gonna spend the money, the most money on for the life of the barrel. Let's say somebody shoots a 6.5 Creed and let's say your barrel life is, I don't know, 2,500. Let's, let's say 2,000, okay? And you're gonna shoot, uh, what do you shoot, sir? 6.5 Creed? 6.5 five Creed. What yeah. bullets do you use? Um, a burger. Burger 140s. How much are they? About 60 cents? 60 to 570. All right, let's say 60 cents, okay? 2,000 rounds. That barrel is going to cost you seven, dollars $800 to put a custom barrel on there. So the barrel is going to be $800. The brass, to shoot 2,000 rounds, how many firings you get on your brass? Let's say 10 firings. Uh, eight to ten, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's 200 pieces of brass. That's about $300 worth of brass. So $700, $800 barrel, $300 worth of brass, $1,200 worth of bullets for the life of the barrel. Bullets are the most expensive thing you will ever shoot, so shoot the good stuff. The inverse, don't waste a lot of good bullets on a bad barrel. It's cheaper just to go replace the barrel. What's the cheapest thing you'll ever buy? Oh. Nope. No. Right. Nope. 
What? Action, scopes, those. I have custom actions that I bought 10 years ago that if I sold them today, I would actually make money on them. They're actually free. You can't <laughs> afford not to buy a custom action. It's an investment. Everything else is an expense. I joke a little, but honestly, if you look at the action scopes, all that, those are the cheapest things because you have an action that you paid $1,500 for. You shoot five barrels worth out of it. That's 10,000 rounds. You spend over $5,000 in bullets. You spent, I don't know, 1,200, 1,500 in brass. You spend another five, 600 in, in, in uh, powder. Primers nowadays, you know, you probably spend $500. But then you sell, if you sell that action and you get $1,400, the action costs you $100. It costs you, what, a penny a round? You see what I mean? Yeah. So think about it that way. And it uh, makes no sense not to, again, the bullets are the most expensive thing you'll ever buy. It only makes sense to shoot them out of the best equipment that you can. So you're not wasting your money. Having said that, buy a good bullet. Burgers, obviously you guys know I shoot burgers. They're very high quality bullets. But if you're hunting, Burger makes hunting bullets, but if you require something different, just make sure they're a good quality bullet. The other B is brass. You gotta have good brass. You guys know I use Lapua. Uh, I'm sponsored, but I was using Lapua before I was sponsored. And it's really good brass. Uh, if you can get some Lapua brass, get it. Uh, my mentor, Mike Downey, told me when I started shooting competition, if Lapua doesn't make brass for it, don't chamber a barrel for it. Uh, donuts. You guys have heard of donuts? Where do they come from? So, what did you say? Brass growth in the neck. Brass growth in the neck. Close. You know how I said the brass thins down every time it stretches? Mm -hmm. Well, what ends up happening is the brass is flowing forward. The neck is the thinnest part. But then the shoulders are thick. As the brass is flowing, at some point, the shoulder becomes part of the neck. The thicker part of the shoulder comes around that corner, becomes part of the neck. That's where the donut comes from. Donuts don't really hurt anything unless you don't know how to deal with them. <laughs>